those procedures. Now, if you look at a biotech product or a pharma product, primarily of a genetic origin, the approval process for them have been reduced to bare three, and mind you, there were 27 approvals required just five years back. And of course, one more thing which we cannot uh, undermine, that is currently the bilateral trade uh, negotiations with European Union and India is on, it's open. So, is India attractive? Definitely. Why? Because of so many commonalities. Okay, we keep on saying one thing, you know, to undermine some other countries. Like that, we we are we are good in English. English is a spoken language, you know. The most common part is the commonality of the legal arrangements. The okay? Indian law and the British law all have a large amount of commonality. which makes it easier to set up and run businesses. Now I will show, I just wanted to mention two examples where they have obtained reasonable success in investment and collaborations. One of them is the Research Council of UK, which actually invests in partnership with various Indian institutes and industries. There have been 80 such collaborations from 2000 onwards. And a hell lot of money being funded. Now, there are 16 institutes which have been uh, mostly active in it. And this is, uh, you know, I've just tried to capture some of them. You may not be able to read the small ones. In fact, I'm having difficulty to read that and this. So I'm sure you can't read that as well. Now, this is another collaborative research function which is, uh, which is being going on. Yeah. This is very unique. You know, this has been funded by five different entities. Okay. You have the DOT, you have the DATI, you have Innovate UK, you have Newton Fund, and Gita. Now this, well, for those who are you know, still interested, the last date for applying, applying for this collaborative research fund is today. Now, so there are certain things which have been going on, there are certain things which will continue, and there are certain amount of Difficulties, apprehensions in the market about IP. Now let's move into the IP part. What's IP? How is the IP structured in India? We have gone through several reforms and what we stand today as being a member of the uh, TRIPS. We respect and call ourselves TRIPS compliant. So we have something for some regulations, statutory or the others in all six or seven branches of IP as TRIPS has laid down, from uh, copyright, trademark, geographical indication, patents, industrial designs, layouts, and protection of crop. We also have some questions which have been often asked by overseas investors about trade secrets. Although we may not have a proper trade secret statute, the trade secret in this country is controlled primarily by confidentiality and copyright laws. The onus of that lies with the employer. That's how it has been structured. I have also given uh, uh, the logo of the Indian Patent Office there, which has undergone serious reforms and are, have proven themselves in a large way to be competitive in the industrial level. Today, you know, among the very few countries who are 
search authorities and examination authorities of PCT application, Indian Patent Office happens to be one of them. Yeah, the, like all other places, there are backlogs. Backlogs are there in every country, more or less. What's interesting is that, you know, in, in, if you look at a little bit of the statistics about the patents in India, 90% of the Indian patents are basically on improvements. Okay. It's, it's, it's an existing technology which has been, imp which, which they have gone through some improvement. That's what we call probably innovation. And what is this improvement? It's increasing the output, reducing the time, or the quality, or finding a cheaper alternative. This business, if you look at in the overall function globally, has been best explained by the five forces of Michel Potter. And if you look at the forces of this, there are three horizontal forces and two vertical forces. The three horizontal forces are very, very interesting for competition. They are threats of substitutes, threats of existing rivals, and threat of new entrants. Now, all these three threats, if you look at this, can be very, very effectively controlled only by IP. If you are in a business, and competition is going to be there everywhere. So there is going to be threat of competition, there will be threat of new entrants, there's going to be existing rivalry. And how do you capitalize and maximize your revenue in that is IP is possibly the best tool which you can. Of course, you have the vertical competitions also, that is the bargaining power of the vendors and the customers, where it is the appeal of the IP rather than the crux of the IP. The point I'm trying to mess here is that this is the economics of doing business. This is the economics of business strategy. And we have it all established reasonably well in our country. The IP management processes, it is all the same. In various organizations which you try to build it. You have a framework which comes after selection, and you develop it. And what I'm trying to stress again here is that we have that almost ready here. Now if you look at the IP roadmap, how does the IP roadmap move? You start as a defensive player, that is you don't want to be sued, you take all the precautions, you don't want to put your step on somebody else's IP. And gradually, as you mature from defensive, you become a little bit offensive, where you want to enforce your patterns which you have secured. And you start talking and thinking about licensing. That's the point when you grow big. This grow big is when you get more investments. Your size increases. You start becoming a strategic player. That's when you call for further investments. And finally, you go to a leadership position where you set the rules, others follow you. Now, if you look at the IP of this country, the unique part is you have players in all four segments. You have players who have just started up, who are defensive. Many of them could be clueless, who have started understanding. You have, you'll find players who have become offensive. We started enforcing, and strategic and, you know, leaders like, you know, there are several leaders who have uh, actually set down the rules of the game. Now, that's also a unique opportunity for, you know, for investment to come in. Now, a few points which I would like to mention is that, which makes it more exciting from the UK perspective to the Indian market. Firstly, as I said, the commonality of law. We are a member of WTO, which makes us obliged to several conditions and situations. 
we have treaties and reciprocal arrangements between the countries. The tax regime in India is becoming far and far more interesting for overseas investment to roll in. We are having more and more SECs. And we have also started a new thing which was out there a couple of years back. You know, IP is an intangible asset. We have started a depreciation model for that, which even makes investment far, I mean, additionally exciting. The enforcement has also been increased to a large extent. There was a time, you know, when we, when many of us were studying, you know, and we never, uh, I mean, if I ask a question, how many of you have photocopied a book when, in your, when you were a student? We all have done that, okay? I mean, you see, I'm not, not that I'm not a non, non sinner We did it because we never, I mean, nobody told me I was doing something wrong. Okay. My classmate told me that you go under the flyover, that fellow there will do both sides in two pages at this cost. But today, you know, when such things are done, there are a large level of increased awareness. In fact, you know, it's a surprising thing, you know, some of the photocopying shops have been sued by JNU for doing such an exercise. And but there were times when those books were you know, photocopied and bound, spirally bound and readily available. So that awareness has gone a big way. And remember, that's what I'm talking about. India, India also comes from another uh, uh, another perspective where <coughs> IP has been there thousands of years ago. Okay, when uh, Emperor Shah Jahan built Taj Mahal, which took apparently several years, he thought it was his creation, his design, his copyright, his intellectual property. He owned it. So how did he want to protect it? He had a very easy way. He cut the hands of all the workers who worked. So whereas we have an extreme case thousands of years ago of protecting IP by cutting the hands of the creators, again, you know, there was a a massive use of mm, unprotected material. It's prim primarily because of non-awareness. We were not aware. Copyright, you know, as some some of the people feel, it's it's the right to copy. So we are much much better off that. You know, in the last 10, 20 years, we have had several several seminars, several exercises, several awareness program. You know, I I mean. So, Many of the people sitting here have organized. Now, what is the most in the, of, of all the situation which I've talking in the past, if you look at right now, the current situation, what's the most encouraging part? Okay. It's most exciting because, you know, it's the most exciting time for investing. And when you say investing, it's an exciting time for registering IP in India. Primarily because we have got into a well-structured means and we are or we have the intentions of improving the methods as we go along. Now at this time we come up to IP Dome or you know, has come out with this toolkit. This IP toolkit, you know, as it gets launched today is smart, definitely. Not because it has the word smart in its name. Or maybe also because it has the word smart in its name. It's primarily because of its format, the design, the classification of industries, and the approach towards creating and safeguarding IP with an interest of monetizing. That's what makes it unique. And I guess it will be useful and meaningful to all IP owners and investors in the, be it a large corporation or an SME or a startup, needless to say, you know, this is 
this this might also fall under one of those success stories of our current prime minister you know made in india it is it's it's indeed made in india so uh i thank all of you for your patient hearing and i also thank ip dome and sapna for coming out with a product which will be useful